Now we all know and love the Falcon. Behind me is a Mark II G6E Turbo, and it is simply one of the most beloved cars here in Australia. It has got that famous inline six Turbo Barra engine, and since unfortunately 2016 when Ford decided to cancel the Falcon, there hasn't been a real good competitor come in until 2018. And I've been trying to convince you guys on the channel about this Kia Stinger GT, which in a lot of ways, on paper especially, is very similar to this. Now I've compiled a little bit of a list here to show you guys actually the similarities of these two cars. So, you know, let's start straight away with the engine. Now, we all know the G60 Turbo has got the four liter inline six Barra. Thing makes 270 kilowatts and 533 Newton meters, which is 365 horsepower and about 395 pound foot of torque. Zero to 100 in this is claimed at about 5.1 seconds and it is mated to the very, very good six-speed ZF gearbox. Now, if we look at the Kia Stinger here, this has a 3.3-liter twin-turbo V6 engine, makes 272 kilowatts and 510 newton meters of torque. So again, about 365 horsepower and 375 pound-foot of torque. So it is slightly down on torque, though in the zero to 100, this does get 4.8 seconds claimed. This is mated with an eight-speed auto, and they are both rear-wheel drive. Now, even with the price of these vehicles, they are quite comparable, even though the Falcon is no longer around. From new, this was about $57,000 here in Australia. The Kia Stinger GT, well, that starts off even right now today at about $60,000, so this offers a huge amount of value for that money. Now, even with the curb weight of these cars, they are almost identical. The G6E actually weighs in slightly heavier, but only by about five kilos. They are both around 1.7 tons. And even the size of these vehicles, you know, if you look at the size, they are nearly identical. They are very long, very big cars, rear wheel drive. Both have six cylinder engines, both turbos. There's a lot here to compare. Now just having a quick look over both of these cars, both do have a couple of minor modifications. So starting off from the G60 Turbo, clearly you can see this car is running a set of coilovers. It is quite low and menacing. Has a intake and it does have a intercooler. There hasn't been a tune put on this, so I am hoping it's still gonna be a very comparable test here. Now, even with the FG body styling here with the G60, look, I think it is a really good looking vehicle. I think, you know, it's, it's lasted quite a long time now uh, you know, with the style and still turns quite a few heads this thing. Now over here with the Stinger GT as well, this has a couple of minor modifications also. It does have a K&N intake setup put in and it does have a upgraded Kia exhaust system. So it does have bimodal exhaust modes and stuff which is very nice to see on a car like this and styling wise on this particular car, I think it's a real love-hate relationship with a lot of people. I think it's a pretty good looking vehicle, though I do admit certain angles are better than others. One thing that I will point out that I kind of frustrates me is that these are not real. I like the way they look. I just wish Kia made them functioning. But other than that, I really do like the styling of this car. I think the headlights look good. The wheels look good. Very nice looking car in my opinion. Now let's go ahead and start. In what's familiar to all of us, the G6E Turbo here. This is uh, definitely brings nostalgia to us from Australia and firing this old girl up here. It's gonna be hard to beat, but before we head off, let's do a sound check. Starting in the 
Turbo here, the Falcon, the one everybody knows and loves. Look, this is actually one of my first times, uh, you know, sitting in here and driving a G60 Turbo. I've been in countless other Falcons, but, you know, the G60 Turbo, it was a pretty nice place to be, especially in this Mark II version. It's, uh, it did have a, quite a nice feel to it. I absolutely do love the, the interior here. You know, you've got the cream leather seats here, which are very comfortable, and it does still look pretty nice in here. It really does. Now, when we do compare this car with the Stinger, we do have to remember that this car is much older, though still has a very nice feel to it inside, I will say. You know, we do have a touchscreen infotainment system here, though. Look, we, the technology in the Stinger is, is miles ahead of this, but this does just have such character, you know, such soul to it. And that, that's one of the big things is that it's hard to find modern cars today that capture that same sense like this G60 Turbo does so well. The ZF6 speed here, it's fantastic as always, guys. You know, everyone knows about it. The, the, the Tiptronic mode as well is really good in here. It's set up the proper way like a sequential gearbox would be. And it just knows what it's doing. So it's a really good comfortable gearbox to drive. And when you put it in performance mode, it lets you know that it, you know it's awake and ready to go. Now, fuel consumption. Look, this is a older engine than the Stinger GT here, but it's not terrible. And especially when you drive it, you know, moderately, and it's not being crazily modified and tuned. This particular one hasn't been tuned, and look, it's averaging about 13 liters. For 100 k's which is pretty good now if you grandma this thing which is very hard to do with that dosing but if you did ford claimed it at about 12 liters per 100 k's now one negative with the g60 turbo here versus the stinger is that it doesn't get a limited sleep diff from factory unfortunately it is an open diff um, I don't really know why they did that because if you had an XR model Falcon, they did get a limited slip diff. So a little bit bizarre, the rationale from Ford there, but that's what we got. And just rolling onto it. It is effortless. I tell you like, wow. That is, that is why they sold so many Barras as they did, because it's just a phenomenal engine. And my goodness, you know, this one as well, you know, only having a couple of minor bolt-ons, it's phenomenal. It really is. Now, handling has always been a bit of an issue with these Falcons because, you know, from factory, they have been claimed to be boats. And they are with stock suspension, 100%. This has got XYZ coilovers installed. So look, it is better. Uh, you know, there are a lot of very good coilovers you can fit to these cars and it really does improve the handling. But from factory, look, these were really boaty cars. They, they didn't have any, you know, adjustable dampening or anything, so. It was what you got, but, you know, again, this was meant to be the cruiser, the luxury car, just wafts over the road, and, uh, you know, it did what it was designed for extremely well. Now, zero to 100, these things are claimed at around five seconds. We all know that they're really great and fast, but, look, it's on the freeway where they perform the best, but... We're gonna do one anyways and just see what we get here. So just chuck it into performance mode, let it, let it do its thing because look, again, the ZF is really good at what it does. Boost, a little bit squirrely, 100. <laughs> again, like once this thing just hits into that boost range, man, it is, such a good car it really is 
Like, even in the G60 Turbo like this, or you know, the luxury one, man, it's good. But again, you know, the real gem, the real star of this car and the engine is the roll-on acceleration. I really wish they had a launch control feature in this car. I think it would have benefited hugely. But yeah, again, the torque in this thing is monstrous and Oof. <laughs> wow, it's good. All right, now jumping straight into the Kia Stinger GT here. We're gonna do a zero to 100. This has launch control, so we've put it in sport mode. The ESC traction control is off, so what you do, foot hard on the brake, foot hard on the accelerator, and go. 100. <laughs> and that is uh, really kind of where I notice a bit of a difference here is it gets off the line a lot quicker. But I do have to say, I think on the top end, having that single turbo advantage, it does give you a little bit of a harder pull when you're already at speed but I believe getting that 4.8 is what this is claimed at. Twin turbo, you know, so you've, you've got instant power basically straight away. So yeah, one, once this thing is gone, man, it, it, they, this thing pulls. That's kind of the, the real big test with this Kia Stinger GT is because the, the Falcon is so good at speed at accelerating. You know, this has a little bit less of a torque figure, but you know, again, you, you step into it. <laughs> it still gets up and moves, it really does. Um, and just jumping straight into this one from the, the Falcon there, look, I, I honestly think it's comparable. I do think that the Barra has a slight advantage on the top end, you know, I believe it'd have a bigger single turbo. So, you know, it, it does have that advantage there, but man, it's, again, it, it feels fairly similar. It really does. Now, one of the biggest differences I noticed straight away jumping into this thing is it just definitely does feel a lot more premium. Uh, and it, it definitely feels completely alien though as well from any kind of Aussie car I've been in, you know. This is, uh, you know, a Korean version, and I gotta say, you know, they've done an incredible job in here to make it feel as nice as it does. You know, you've got a very nice wheel here. It's got a flat bottom, good grip to it as well. You do have paddles, which is a nice touch. I almost do wish that the Falcons had paddle shifters sometimes, though I do appreciate that they do have the correct sequential way of running through the gears. This one, there is no uh, you know, movement on the shifter here. It is just paddles only, or you let it do its thing. But I love the, the brushed aluminum in here. The, the buttons feel very high quality. You know, everything is kind of squishy and soft touch, which is nice. Got a heads up display, great infotainment system. It, it definitely just does feel miles ahead of the Falcon, though, I'm going to say again, though, the Falcon just, it does have nostalgia. It, it's got that nostalgia about it. I don't know what it is. Like, I can't say specifically what really makes me think that. But you sit in that thing, and it's just very cushy. It, it, it just, it doesn't feel like it's trying to be, I guess, as sports-oriented as this feels a little bit more. <laughs> Now let's get into the Achilles heel of this Stinger GT, which is straight away, obviously the Kia name brand. So look, the Kia nameplate doesn't have a whole lot of you know enthusiasts behind it because forever since we can remember, Kia has been not known for making fun performance cars. They just, they didn't do it. And this is kind of one of their first attempts and 
I gotta say they've really done an incredible job. This car is very well engineered, it's very well designed, it handles beautifully, goes quick, and look, it's just such a nice place to sit. It feels much, much, much more premium than any other Kia I've ever been in. And if you go into any brand new Kia, any brand new Hyundai right now, you're gonna be impressed because they have upped their game so much in the past few years. It's almost unrecognizable from their early days. They really have changed the game with their cars. Now, obviously the next thing people are gonna whinge about with this compared to the Falcon is the engine. Look, this is a 3.3 liter twin turbo V6 again. Modification wise, that's the big, that's the big cutthroat thing because everybody knows you can modify a Barra to make incredible power. You know, the, the world record Barra here, it's in Australia and it makes over 2000 wheel horsepower. You know, it's, it is on the level of the RB and the 2JZ. You know, it's of that caliber. This hasn't had time to prove itself yet, though the world record I have found is in Australia, and I believe it is pushing over 708 wheel horsepower. So, you know, it is no slouch. It is nothing to be reckoned with. You know, again, these cars are still really new, so it's gonna be interesting to see how these go with the modification scene and, and, and how they end up pushing this power and, and lasting, it's, it's going to be a test to see if it does. But, you know, I think there's a lot of potential here. And look, to be pushing 700 rear wheel horsepower, not a lot of guys are pushing more than that in their Barras. So the interesting fact that I did find on the internet a few days ago was if you just go and get a full exhaust system put in on this car, you get a full intake system like this has, and you give it a flash tune, so not even a dyno tune, just, just hook it up to the computer and, and give it a chip tune. There are cars making 320 rear wheel kilowatts. So, you know, that is very comparable to a Barra with similar modifications. So if you're gonna run just basic mods, these are very similar. Another great way to know that these cars are quite similar and comparable is that the Australian police force have adopted the Kia Stinger as one of their new pursuit cars. So, you know, it just shows you that it's very comparable, you know, with the size, with the speed, they go, they really do, you know, like you line these cars up. Oh. It even tells you there's a speed camera around. That is something the Falcon would really benefit with because <laughs> that, that is, that's a whole good reason why you buy this thing right there alone. Just driving this car now, stopped at the lights. Um, look, I'm gonna be as unbiased as I possibly can because I know my audience is, we have a, we have a lot of bogan on my audience, you know, we got, big V8s, we love them, you know, we love the XR6 Turbo Barra. And, you know, look, there is a sp specific demographic of people who like those cars. And look, sitting in this Kia, I understand your point because there's, it's the soul of the car. And that's what I was trying to touch on earlier is that when you sit in the Falcon, it just does feel different because it's almost like it's not trying to be as sporty or it's not trying to be as luxurious, even though, you know, it's, it's the luxury Falcon, but I can't see, you know, a 40 year old Bogan buying one of these, even though it has all the similarities, because again, it is a lot more technically advanced. It's a lot more luxurious feeling in here. And I think, again, that's just probably the reason why it gets so much hate, even though I think if you guys are being unbiased, you should agree that there is a lot to compare. It's just, again, I think it comes down to the soul of the car. And look, if you're a younger buyer and you're more open 
This car is amazing, and, and it really is the, the, the equivalent Falcon that's being modernized. It's the 2020 Kia version of a Ford Falcon, and I'm still going to hold true to that saying because it's large, it's rear-wheel drive, there is still plenty of room in the back, though this is slightly smaller on leg room back there and headroom, but there's still tons of room. It, it really does do it all. It's fast. You can still modify it. You can still make good power off really small modifications. The only issue is the Kia name badge and that this car is a little bit too modern is why so many Australians don't like it. They don't like it because of all this great tech, all this great luxury. It actually does the reverse effect of people buying it, I think. I think that's a big thing after sitting in that and sitting in this right now, is that the people who buy Falcons and Commodores, they, done, they didn't want it to be this fancy. They didn't want it to be having this much tech. If Kia had it dumbed it down and you know maybe put a bigger you know single turbo setup or made it, a, a, I don't know, something along that lines, I think is why so many people haven't bought one of these. So the verdict, we have driven both of these cars uh, on paper. Again, these are very similar cars, very similar specs, and you know, similar numbers they put out. Personalities, they are different. You know, look, after going back to back with these cars today, I can tell you, this definitely has a much different personality than the Falcon. This is definitely tailored more for the European rivals. This is BMW, this is Mercedes, this is Audi. This is what that car is competing with. Over here with the Falcon, look, this is what every Aussie knows and loves. It's a lot simpler, a lot easier to work on yourself, you know, and I think that's why it's got that kind of Aussie personality and, and people love it so much. Though, unfortunately, they don't make these anymore and I don't think they ever will again. So if you want something that's very similar, at least on paper, it's turbocharged, it's rear wheel drive, it's big, fit the whole family, it's practical, cheap, for what this thing is, it is cheap. So this is, this is definitely the next best thing right now today in Australia. What do you guys think? Put it down in the comments. Do you like things about this Stinger? Do you not like the Stinger at all? Good things about the Falcon. I want to know you guys' feedback, so put it in the comments. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If so, please go ahead and hit that like button. Consider subscribing if you're new here. And we'll see you on the next video.